Shine. So say amen. In this text this morning, Christ is teaching the Sermon on the Mount and giving instructions to crowd that follow him on godly living. And in this one verse, we can see the significance of living a godly life. Many times throughout our rebellious years, we have made selfish statements like, it's my life and I'll live it like I want to. It's my life, I'll live it my way. You say it's my life and I don't care what people think. Well, that needless to say, the Lord is very much concerned with the way we live our lives. And if you would just draw back to verse 14, it says, ye are the light of the world. As believers, we represent Christ here on earth. We are the ambassadors of heaven here on this earth. You see, an ambassador is one who visits a foreign land and represents the land in which he comes from. All right. And for you and I, we, being a part of the body of Christ, we represent Christ 24 hours, seven days a week. At church, we should act like Christians. All right. But even at the job, we should act like Christians even in the community and even at our homes. We should always make sure that we represent Christ. And the Bible gives us specific instructions concerning how we interact and live in this world. Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you look at what the Bible says, even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. John said in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And there are many passages that we can make reference to that remind us that this earth is not our home. We are children of God on our way to heaven. And every now and then we need to be reminded of that. That we're on our way to heaven. Amen. Every now and then when you're saved, you ought to be thinking about heaven. Amen. We want God to bless us why we're here. There's nothing wrong. But our thoughts shouldn't be consumed with being blessed on this earth. Because we have a greater blessing on the way. Every now and then in your private time when you and the Lord are talking, you ought to be thinking about seeing Him face to face. It ought to cross your mind that one day He's going to say, Sir, the way I go. It ought to it ought to stir you up on the inside to know one day he will present us with a crown Amen. and reward us for all that we've done good on this earth. Sometimes we lose focus, we get off track by being concerned with earthly rewards. Right. And if you just live an obedient lifestyle, do the will of the Father, those blessings will come. I was just listening to the song, you know, Sometimes we work and we work, trying to get all we want. But we should work on being obedient. Because if we work on being obedient to God, then you, if you just travel a road that he set before you, you'll, you'll pick up blessings along the way. you got to understand, God has things in store for each one of us. But we must live that lifestyle, the obedient lifestyle. You don't, listen, when you put God first and live obedient, you don't have to go searching for a blessing. Amen. Amen. 
you you heard the phrase that blessing will overtake you. Amen. Yeah, you, you live the way God ordained and called us to live. Listen, blessings will find you. Amen. If you just keep the Lord. And in this passage of scripture, familiar passage, it says, let your light so shine before me. Brothers and sisters, our godliness should be evident in the way we walk, in the way we talk, in the way we treat our brothers and sisters in Christ, in the way we perform our jobs, the way we carry and conduct ourselves. Watch me now. Nobody's watching. Right. You, you're saved late at night. Y'all missed that. You're saved after midnight, just so you know that. You know, when, when you don't think anybody's around, you're still a Christian. You should conduct yourselves in that manner. See, we know how to act when folks see us. But you ought to carry yourself just as Christ-like when nobody's watching. Amen. And the thing is, there's always somebody watching. Because the Lord is always watching. Right. You may be able to get away from family and friends. I think everybody knows the pastor's routine. Either at the post office or at the church. It's not likely I'm going to bump into you. Unless you're out there on my right. So you don't have to worry about being seen by certain folks. But you got to keep in mind that there's one man that's always looking. And that's God. And if we would carry ourselves Christ-like all the time, we wouldn't have to worry about getting caught up. We wouldn't have to worry about getting in the jam when you live an obedient lifestyle. See, it, it, it's not hard to do the right thing when you have someone pushing you to do the right thing. When you, when you have an accountability partner, it's not hard to do the right thing. I heard a man say it's hard to be a Christian. I disagree with that. It's hard trying to be a Christian and live a world at the same time. It's hard trying to be a Christian and do your own thing at the same time. That's extremely difficult. Because that incites the spiritual battle within us. Because when you're trying to do your thing and you know what's right, that's when the Holy Spirit and the flesh go at it. And if you really want inner peace, we have got to submit our will to the will of the Father. I just believe that we wouldn't, we wouldn't be so angry if we weren't trying to do our thing instead of God. We wouldn't be so physically sick. We would line up and be obedient to the will of the Father. We would be able to get along with all the saved folks. It's bad for saved folks to get along. But, but we would be able to be cordial among brothers and sisters in Christ if he was the first thing on our priority list. It's a sad thing when they have fights in church. There's no reason whatsoever. You can comb this Bible through and through. And you will not find it. one example of or a reason for fighting in church. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean we'll always agree. All right. But there is a Christ-like way to do everything. Amen. And if we would have followed the example of the Lord, there are times where we may have to back up and say, you know what, you're right. Or we may agree to disagree. All right. But there's never a reason to storm out of this place and cuss everybody out there still here. We have got to let our light shine before me. You see, during the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, he was always preparing his followers for his departure. And he teaches the importance of their light. The disciples were being taught that they must let their light shine because Christ was fully aware of the darkness of this world. All through John's gospel, all through his epistles, you, John makes the comparison of light and darkness. And you and I as believers 
we must understand that we are the light of the world. Amen. And the world in a sinful state, if we're going to see Christ, they're going to see it through the body of Christ. Amen. Every man that wakes up in the morning sees the trees, sees the sky. And there's a part of man that realizes there's somebody behind creation. Amen. So they're not strange, strangers to God. Even an atheist believes in God, even though they say they don't. An atheist has to know there's a God, they just choose not to believe in him. All right. All right. So to the fact that there is a God is evident to all mankind, but to see God work through man, he works through the body of Christ. So for man to be convinced that God is love, there must be love displayed through his people. Man is going to be convinced that the Lord will make a way. The church must testify about his goodness. If, if, if a lost man is going to be convinced that he can be saved from his sins, somebody who has been delivered got to share their testimony about how God made a way out of nowhere in their life. All of this is in relation to letting our light shine. We're going to spend this month preaching on evangelism because the church must get outside of our comfort zone, the four walls, and go tell others about Christ. We've got to do it. But before we're going to reach the lost, we've got to make sure we're right. A believer will have a very hard time leading a sinner to Christ that lives a reckless lifestyle. Many people know what thus saith the Lord. Many people can share what the Bible says, but you're not going to convince me by telling me your words and I don't see anything evident in your life. Right. You, you just can't kick it on Saturday night any old kind of way and then tell me what the Bible says and expect me to conform. Matter of fact, let me do it this way. I can't come in here on a Sunday morning after just living a living, living, any old kind of way, reckless lifestyle, worldly lifestyle, even if I have the ability to come in here and rightly divide the word of truth, to open up the text in a way that you can understand it, make it plain for a child to understand it. But if I, if I live like an outlaw, that's not going to bring glory to God or the people who hear. Now, it doesn't make the word ineffective because the word is the word. But if I'm going to draw the sinner to Christ, or encourage First Baptist to live a holy life, I've got to live one myself. And there are many in churches now who know what the Bible says and don't mind sharing it with others. But the lifestyle you live doesn't match up. How can you tell me to avoid sin and put Christ first if you're still doing that thing which the Bible forbids. Sometimes we think our words are that powerful. Listen, you really want to attract somebody to God, let them see the godliness in your lifestyle. You know, people, you will, you will have more people see you than people who actually hear you. You've got co-workers that you may have never had the opportunity to get one on, but they see how you carry yourself. You'd be amazed there's somebody right now on your job, in your family, in your community that wants to come up to you and ask you how, if you're a Christian, or ask you what church you attend because they see something about you that's different. And that's all in accordance with verse 16, letting your light shine. You probably don't even realize the positive impact you have on the places where your feet stand. You probably don't realize you are the peacemaker on your job. You may not even realize you're the one that people gravitate to. Why? Because there's just something about you. The world don't understand, but other believers, we know it's the Lord that's in you and present in the way you carry yourself. Sometimes you can walk into a room and the room light up. Why? Because you tell them now. You walk, there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a supervisor who's glad to see you come to work. Not only are you productive, but you've got that, that godly persona about you that just makes you 
a joy to work for and work with. So we have to let our light shine at all times. Students that are still in school, whether you are elementary, high school, middle school, whatever. Listen, even at your school, if you're a little Christian, listen, you have a positive impact. Amen. Right there in the classroom, people, whether you realize it or not, that teacher will see something in you. Your classmates see something in you. And if you're saved, it ought to be evident. Like I say all the time, listen, when, you, when folk find out you're saved, it shouldn't shock <laughs> they shouldn't be surprised to hear it. They shouldn't look and be like, wow, I never guessed it. <laughs> we ought to live in such a way Amen. that we display Christ in our conversation, in our walk, in our talk. People ought to look at you and be like, man, there's something about you that's different. And that's when you can tell them, let me tell you what the Lord has done. Amen. Let your light so shine before me. And then it says, that they may see your good works. So sometimes we don't think our work is significant. Sometimes we don't think that it's necessary for men to see our work. But the Bible says, let your light so shine when before men. Why? So that they may see your good work. Now it's not that we're working to be seen by men. All right. But our work, our lifestyle will be evident by me, if we live according to the word of God. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It brings glory to the Father when we choose to live according to his word. Do you know that when we sin, whatever level of sin we are, whether we tell of what one might consider to be a white lie was all a lie in God's eyes. Whenever we tell a lie, we take some of them along to it, that's still it. If we, if we use foul language, if we have sinful thoughts, all that sin, and sin grieves the heart of God, breaks it. Now, you may not think anybody knows, but like we said, there's one man always watching, and that's God. And if, it's sin, if sin grieves the heart of God, when we obey him, that brings glory to God. Because in this mean world where we have all different types of temptations we can get into, but when we choose, we make a heartfelt decision, I'm going to do right instead of wrong, that's when God gets the glory out your life. And when you do that which is right, it glorifies the Father, and since we are, in verse 16, that they may see your good works, when people see you choosing to do right or wrong, that has an impact in people's lives. I'm 39 years old, and I can, I can remember deacons in the church well, I was raised when I was 10 years old. They didn't talk much. I'd never heard them teach or preach, but they carried themselves in such a way that here I am nearly 40 years old and I can still remember the example that they said. Amen. And there are some of you in First Baptist right now who are these young people may never hear, speak, or teach, but they watch you and they see you showing the love of God and that will stay with them until they're old. Amen. You may not realize it. But you have a positive impact on people's lives. And there's a flip side to that. If you're always fussing and cussing, if you carry knives and pistols, if you run around here raising all kinds of sand, folks see that too. And it looks bad for one to say that they're saved and live that kind of lifestyle. We represent Christ. And in order for the gospel to be received by the world. Not only do we share the word of God, but it's got to be evident in how we live. And we all have work to do. Everybody have work to do. None of us are perfect, but we ought to be striving for perfection. We ought to be in the word of God, reading to learn how we can be more Christ-like. Our lives, we live in this world right now to bring glory to the Father. And it begins by us being obedient to his word. Amen. Don't worry about your blessing. Some of us are focused on blessing. Lord bless me here, bless me. Just, just be obedient. The blessing Amen. will come. Amen. But when the world sees you trying to do right, because it's rough out here. It's rough. We all got stuff we deal with. But with the help of the Lord, we're able to take one day at a time. As a matter of fact, 
just back it up and take a half a day at a time, or an hour at a time. Some of us, we got to take five minutes at a time to turn it up. As long as we keep God with us, people will see that. And folks will look and see, man, you know what? This person, that person, they're really trying to live a holy lifestyle. I shared with you a while back, I had a coworker. I carried Mary and Shirley, he was this man, he was, he was quiet, laid back, did a job, worked hard, you know. And I walked up to him and asked him, I said, man, you a, you a minister? And he laughed. He was like, no, I'm not a minister. You know? I'm a believer. I'm trying to do the right thing. You know? It was just something about the way he carried it, said, that it was obvious he was saved. Amen. And I went and asked him if he was a minister. And like I said, you may never know who was watching you and the impact you will have on them. As a matter of fact, some of you carry yourself in such a godly manner that you work with a cloud. And when they see you coming, they straighten up. So as we spend this month talking about evangelism on Sunday mornings, listen, we got to start right here. And be careful, because when you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit to share your faith and you want to invite people to church, Keep in mind now, if, if you have been a cut up, and now you want to talk about the law, you're going to make yourself look bad. All right. So what we need to do is always carry and conduct ourselves in a Christ-like manner. Amen. So that when you meet that person who may know you, whether you realize it or not, they'll be willing to receive what you say because they can see you living in your lifestyle. You can't clown at work one day. And then come to church Sunday and leave here feeling good and then want to witness Monday. But they know how you've been doing. So what we need to do is always live according to the word of God. Think about that. Let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's a biblical command given by Jesus Christ himself. Amen. That we are to let our light shine. Amen. We are to let men see Amen. our good works. We're not, another note on that. We're not to walk around being shamed. Right. It's not something to be, we're not going to draw people to Christ being shy Christians. Amen. Being shamed to, to live a holy life. Being shamed to talk about the goodness of God. That's not going to help either. Let your light so shine so that men may see your good works. And if we do that, not only will they see the goodness of God in you, but it will bring glory to the Father. Amen. And if we would take that to heart, our ultimate goal as Christians is to glorify God. Right. And if we can let our light shine, let people see the goodness in you, they ought to hear it in your voice. They ought to see it in your walk. It ought to be evident in your lifestyle that you are a true child of God. And if we do that, it brings glory to the Father and it helps lead the Son to Christ. Amen. Amen. That's all I have for you on this morning. Matthew 5 to 16. A familiar passage. Take it to heart. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Let your light shine so that you can bring glory to the Father. Let us pray. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, first of all, for the light that you have given us, thanking you for the salvation of our soul. Thanking you, Father God, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Father, we thank you that according to your word, we can come to you just as we are. No matter what we've done, where we've been, Lord, if we just repent our sins and accept you as Lord and Savior of our life, Lord, we receive the gift of eternal life. Lord, we pray right now that your word hold fast in our hearts, Lord, that as we venture out into this world, into our homes, into our careers, Lord, that the world will see the Christ in us. Pray that through our witnessing and through our walk that we would help lead a sinner to Christ. 
Lord, we love you. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me one this morning here who doesn't know Christ to pardon your sins and feel the Spirit of God speaking to your heart. The most important decision you'll ever make in life is whether or not you choose to accept or reject the offer of eternal life. The saving the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if you're here this morning and you feel the Spirit of God speaking to your heart, I'll put it off another day as we stand all over the building.